the end of the line for the Sheboygan Armory. Flight for Life called after pickup truck rolls over near Cedar Grove. Marijuana legalization bill to be reintroduced in 2019. These stories and more just ahead on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. News for Wednesday, November 14th, 2018. After learning that the Community Armory Project can come up with the funds they need to save the armory, a city committee has voted to move forward with the demolition of the facility. Dane Schaefer, who had headed up the group, notified the city last week that they were unable to come up with the necessary funding to save the building and pleaded with the community to step up in support of the project. At Monday's finance and personnel meeting, the body voted to terminate the agreement, get bids to demolish the historical building, and sell the land. A 27-year-old man was seriously injured in a rollover accident in the town of Holland Monday night. The Sheriff's Department got a 911 call around 7 o'clock p.m. on of a pickup truck rolled over in a plowed field at the intersection of Sock Trail Road and Smees near the Cedar Grove. Deputies say that the driver was southbound, drifted onto the side of the road, overcorrected, lost control, and went into the ditch. His truck rolled and the driver was ejected through one of the windows. Flight for Life took him to Freighter Hospital with suspected serious injuries. And the fallout continues from a now viral photo of a group of Baraboo High School boys giving what appears to be a Nazi salute. More than 5,000 people have signed an online petition requesting that Baraboo School District suspends the students involved. The photographer and photograph is from last spring but resurfaced last week on social media. It was taken on the steps of the local courthouse, showing a group of boys before the prom. Many of the students were juniors at the time and are now seniors. One student who appeared in a controversial photo says that the photographer told the boys to give a high sign. Brock Turkington says that the boys did not understand what the photographer meant and that the miscommunication resulted in the offending photo. Turkington says that nothing disrespectful was meant by the photograph and that those involved are asking for forgiveness. A university administrator says that the photo could impact the boys' ability to get into college. The district administrator says she is investigating the photo and will take appropriate action. Over 1,000 pounds of medication were collected on the drug take back day. The final numbers are in from last month's prescription drug take back day in Sheboygan County. Michael Stelter with the Sheboygan Police Department says that on Saturday, October 20th, the sites collected 390 pounds of unused prescription medication from the collection sites throughout the county and 650 pounds from the permanent cities combined. A total of 1,040 pounds of unused medication was collected, and the National Prescription Drug Take Pack Day aims to provide a safe, convenient, and responsible means of disposing of prescription drugs, while also educating the general public about the potential for abuse of medications. And six cases of rare paralyzing diseases are now confirmed in Wisconsin. The State Department of Health Services said yesterday that five of the six people affected by the acute flaccid mellitus in the state are children. A month ago, there were only two cases in Wisconsin. And across 25 states, there have been 80 confirmed cases of the illness during 2018 so far. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has started to track new cases week by week. Acute flaccid 
mellitus causes sudden weaknesses in the arms and legs, similar to polio. Symptoms also include droopy faces or eyelids, slurred speech, and difficulty swallowing. What causes the illness is not yet known, and the CDC recommends frequent hand washing and making sure children are up to date on their vaccinations. A Green Bay man that is accused of bringing heroin and crack cocaine into Langlid County is being charged. 25-year-old Kai Martin allegedly brought more than $15,000 worth of heroin into the county and is being charged with four felony and two misdemeanor drug charges. Information that Martin had a large shipment of heroin and crack cocaine on the way to Forest County was received by the Forest County Drug Task Force on November 8th. A traffic stop of Martin's vehicle was performed by both Forest and Langland County working together. A search of Martin's vehicle on the State Highway 55 at County Highway K in Langlade County revealed more than 23 grams of marijuana and more than 41 grams of crack cocaine. Also found inside of the vehicle was ecstasy, oxycodone, marijuana, and drug paraphernalia. He'll be due back in court on November 19th for an, a balance of initial appearance. It sounds like a fun holiday gift-giving idea. You sign up to give a Christmas gift to a stranger. And if you do, a stranger will give you a gift to you. Police say that the secret sister gift program is actually a, an identity theft scam. Police are warning everyone not to give strangers on the internet your personal information. Well, Watosa police say that the secret sister holiday gift chain making its way online. The post office says that the gift exchange is also a Ponzi scheme. Participants are told that if they buy a $10 gift for a stranger and add six more names to the list, they will get up to 36 gifts in return from other people before Christmas. In one version of the scam, people are asked to give their addresses and credit card information to cover shipping costs. Wauwatosa PD says that it is dangerous to offer your private information to people who you do not know. They also say it is difficult or impossible to catch the people who are being online scams. Madison Representative Melissa Sargent says she will be trying to again get the marijuana legalization legislation to a vote. She has introduced the pot-related bills each year since 2014, which have been blocked from coming up for votes. 16 counties and two municipalities and non-bounding referendum questions on the ballot about marijuana, voters overwhelmingly supported legalized medical marijuana and voters in Milwaukee and Eau Claire counties expressed support for legalized recreational use. Sargent says that the plans to introduce the bill in January after the legislature is sworn in, she said that the facts clearly shown in the legislation is right for Wisconsin and that most dangerous thing about marijuana is that it is illegal. Sergeant said African Americans are four times more likely than Caucasians to be arrested for marijuana charges. And she also said that each arrest for possession of marijuana costs a taxpayer $425 to process the cases. She notes that Colorado, Colorado had state revenue of $100,000 once recreational pot was legalized there. And that is our report for November 14th, 2018 edition of Community News Review. Please join me again next week for another recap of our local news. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.